what does that have to do with pearls? And the answer is nothing. It's kind of like mediocre. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neil Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crane in the box. Y'all, if you are new here, or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Have you noticed that every time I'm out of drag, I'm wearing this beautiful t-shirt? Well, if you wanted your own, you can also buy that in the link below. If you buy it and you tag yourself on Instagram wearing it, then I will feature you in one of my next videos. But enough about that, and let's get into the reason why we are here. We are here to play my favorite game. That is right, it is time for another edition of Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 9, Episode 9, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end, where I let you know who had the fab and drab of the week. This week's runway theme is Bring back my pearls, where the queens must give us their best interpretation of a pearl look. So, without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up is Plastic Tiara, and Plastic Tiara turns the corner and is all covered up in this sort of like hooded piece. She then lifts it down to reveal this sort of like bodice corset with all the pearls all over it. She's got pearls dangling down and she's got pearls in her hair. She's then got this long white skirt and she is pearls from head to toe. She said she is giving you the birth of Venus. And I was like, girl, that is so smart. First of all, this whole piece that opens up is really fun and really cute. I mean, it's not a big reveal, but it is a reveal nonetheless. So it does add a little bit of drama to it. But the question is, what does it reveal to? and what it reveals too is beautiful. This corset feels like really sturdy and tight and very lined, but it's filled, 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 filled with uh, pearls. And that's what you need. When there's a theme that is pearls, you really have to pack it in there. She's got this white dress to give you this whole like goddess theme. And then she's got this blonde hair with pearls in it. The whole shape of the dress is definitely giving me very Mugler, but thrown pearls into it. Overall, this is pure perfection and definitely gonna be a bop. Next up, it's Angeria, and Angeria is coming out with this big fur jacket and this large headpiece. At the tip of her headpiece, there is just a few little pearls, uh, but you know this jacket is gonna come off. She walks down the runway, and only when she gets to the end of the runway does she reveal this jacket. And I think to myself, that is so smart. She's milking her time, and she knows this jacket is gorgeous, so she's gonna give the jacket the time it deserves. Sometimes people get rid of the cover up really quickly, and that's because the cover up is just a cover-up but this jacket is a moment it could be an entire outfit but then she reveals it and then she got this dress underneath and this dress underneath is also spectacular it is got like the pearls all across it but then it's also got like this fur moment on the side that then references not only the jacket but the headpiece she's definitely giving you that Vegas showgirl fantasy and I'm loving every minute of it and Jira has been one of those queens that for me has been like really tops and really lows but this one is definitely a top. It looks spectacular from head to toe and it glistens on the runway. She definitely hit all of her points. Honestly, again, no notes and definitely gonna be a bow. Next up, it's Chanel, and Chanel is coming out as this like creature, but not a regular creature, a creature made out of pearls. She walks out with this white bodysuit with pearls growing all over her and this pearl headpiece. She's got this white face with this blue contour. She's also got a little bit of iridescent all over her body, and she is definitely giving you creature from the Pearl Lagoon. Honestly, when this came out, I thought to myself, ooh, this is such a unique take. When you get a theme like pearls, most most people have a tendency to want to go pretty and that's exactly what we saw with the first two looks of Plastique and Angeria. So I was like, okay, we are just going to get this really pretty runway. And then Chanel comes out with this. I'm like, oh, I love it. And if you know me, you know that I love things that are a little bit weird, a little bit kooky, a little bit off the wall. And I didn't know you could do that with pearls, but this is totally that. This definitely feels like 
futuristic, but it also feels like an AI drawing come to life. Um, I think that this is really unique, especially different for someone like Chanel, who doesn't do this like club kid vibe. But honestly, seeing this, she maybe should be doing a lot more of this because this is genius. It's definitely a look from head to toe. It's definitely a concept from head to toe, and it's definitely gonna be a fuck from head to toe. Next up, it's Gottmik, and Gottmik is coming out in black pearl. She's got this latex bodysuit with these black pearls all over her. She's got these giant horns and this no heel high heel. She definitely decided to go a little bit dark, a little bit spooky, which is very much in Gottmik's vibes, and she does like to go in that horror place. Now, when she first came out, I was first thought to myself, ooh, black, that's interesting, because most people are gonna go with white, because pearl is traditionally white. Now, pearls do come in different colors, so I like that she went with black to, you know, kind of show a little bit of diversity into that. But the question is, do we like the look? Now, I think the look is really cool. It's definitely avant-garde, definitely pushing boundaries, and definitely going into a different direction. The only problem I have is, the only thing that's connecting it to the pearl concept is the fact that it's got pearls all over it. This creature is like this half goat, half demon sort of thing. And I question that, what does that have to do with pearls? And the answer is nothing. She just wanted to go this direction. And that's where I felt like it could have used a little bit more storytelling. Imagine she decided to go in the same idea with this sort of like dark pearl item, but went more in the fish route, uh, more of like this dark uh, mermaid, or maybe in sort of like the pirate vibe, like a skeleton pirate. I think that would have really helped tell that pearl story a little bit more as opposed to this random other creature. Now the creature is cool so I can definitely give her that and the outfit really is tailored and done super super well but when you're competing at this level and this level of drag race especially when you are the fashion queen that comes out with look after look after look I am going to be looking at you a little bit more uh, harsher than other people because we know you can do it. All in all, this is still an amazing look, but is not at the same level as I've seen Gottmik do and not at the same level that I've seen a lot of the queens do. That being said, it's still amazing and definitely gonna get a bow. Next up, it's Roxy Andrews, and Roxy Andrews is coming out with this a pearl and mesh a bodysuit, these white gloves with dangling pearls, and this pearl headpiece. When they said pearl runway, this is exactly what I was thinking someone was gonna do. Actually, this is what I thought everybody was gonna do. So when the first few people came out and they went in all these other directions, I was like, ooh, this is gonna be interesting. And then Roxy does the expected. She comes out in this flapper style dress with all the pearls dangling on it and this pearl headpiece. Personally, I love this pearl hair headpiece, but to be fair, I've seen it done a whole bunch of times with so many different materials and it's something that I even looked at getting myself because I think it's a little bit fun and kooky and can definitely be scaled up or scaled down, but it's nothing original. And this is All Stars, so I am kind of looking for original. The dress itself definitely has a lot of movement and definitely gives you that sort of flapper vibe but yet again, not that original. So then I have to look at the quality of it. And when it comes to the dress, I would have liked to see a lot more pearls, a lot more dangling to really make it feel fuller and more like movement-like. Overall, it's an okay dress. Had this been on a regular season of Drag Race and not an all-star season, I definitely would have rated it a lot higher. Um, however, because it is on an all-star season and the competition is super fierce, it's kind of like, Mediocre. And to say that this is mediocre goes to show you the quality and the level that we have on this season. All in all, it's okay. Not my favorite, but definitely not bad enough to get a drab. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a soft bow. Next up, it's Georges, and Georges is coming out with this gold dress with these pearl detailing, these gold sort of latex gloves, and this black hair with pearls all over it. First up, I will say that Georges definitely looks glamorous. You know, Georges has a tendency to not want to wear a lot of clothes and definitely usually goes in sort of like this bodysuit uh, aesthetic. So to see her not in a bodysuit, I was already like, oh, okay, let's see this side of Georges. And the thing that I like about it is, is that it definitely 
feels like Georgia's in a sense that it's really tiny with a lot of skin showing, but it definitely feels like an elegant version of Georgia's. I think that the the idea of going with this gold is really interesting because again, everybody was going to go with white, so she decided to go in a different direction and the gold definitely stands out on the runway. She's then got this one breast that is a pearl and she's got pearls on her hip. I personally think that this needed a lot more pearl and I say that just because of the color. Had this been like an off-white or an iridescent, then after that it would have read more pearly, but since she went with the gold, I feel like you just need to embellish it a lot more. That being said, it isn't a bad dress by any means of the imagination. Then we get into the hair, and the hair, she decided to go with black hair with pearl detailing in it. I love the pearl detailing and I love the idea of bringing it all the way up to the hair. The only problem I have is with the color black. Because the issue I have is when you have black hair with this white strip in it, it kind of reminds me of the Bride of Frankenstein. And that's sort of not the vibe here at all. She's definitely going more for that elegant woman. Also, there's no black anywhere in the outfit. So I actually think that this would have looked a lot better with brown or blonde hair to kind of pick up the same colors from the outfit and brought it to the top. So a few little minor changes in my opinion, but overall still a very successful look. and still very gorgeous for Georges, and therefore she's gonna get a buff. Next up, it's Nina West, and Nina West is sort of wearing this Elizabethan style dress with the big collar, the big breasts, and the big hips. She then paired it with this modern twist on an Elizabethan style hair, and this face piece. And I'm thinking to myself, what is going on here? <laughs> First up, uh, the face and the hair is very modern, very conceptual. It definitely gives me a lot of those vibes of like Hungry. If you know Hungry, the drag queen, she is amazing, by the way. If you don't know her, go look her up. But it's definitely giving me those vibes. But then she's paired it with this outfit, which is definitely giving me like Elizabethan woman that's gonna chop off your head or that's going to war. It's definitely got two different stories in it. Like one is a little bit more modern and one is a little bit more old school costumey. And so therefore this one gets lost a little bit. There's a lot going on. And as a drag queen, I like when there's a lot going on, but I'm struggling a little bit with this one because I don't understand what the storyline is. Yes, it looks like a very well-constructed dress. And, and yes, you can see that uh, Nina West has really put a lot of time and effort into thinking about this one but I don't think it actually works. And we are so far into the competition that I am like past giving Nina some passes. I feel like she just really needs to step it up. This is All-Stars at the end of the day. Yes, this is better than she's done in her past seasons, but it is not the best we've seen. And you're competing with people like Gottmik and Plastic Tiara who are like redefining the game of fashion on the runways. All in all, even though it's one of the better ones that Nina has done this season, I'm still gonna go ahead and give it a drab. Next up, it's Miss Vanjie, and Miss Vanjie's coming out in this sort of little pearl corseted uh, number with this giant clamshell and this blonde hair with pearls all over it. This feels like a lot of the different queen's ideas are put together. It's got the same bodice and detailing that Plastic Tierra has. It's got the hair that George has probably wanted. It's got this clamshell. It's got everything, but just in the right amount. First up, the bodice corset thing is filled, 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 filled with pearls. So you definitely get the pearl theme immediately. It's got little pearls dangling off of it. It definitely looks very chic, very stunning, a little Moulin Rouge on the pearl aspect. She then got this blonde hair with all the pearls in it in this really interesting shape. So when I was critiquing George's hair, this is the hair that I think would have looked really good on George's outfit because of the color and because of the pearls into it. And then on top of it, uh, uh, Vanjie's done this giant clamshell as if to say, if you didn't get that this was a pearl runway, I'm going to shove it in your face by giving you this giant piece. But what I love about this giant thing at the top is that she kept her legs super bare. So it definitely got a lot of contrast next to it. Some people tend to do a lot and then therefore swallows them up, aka Nina West. But this one, she just really decided, you know what, I'm going to put all your focus up here and I'm going to keep my legs bare and sexy and still give you that essence that we've come to learn from uh, Vanjie, which is this like sort of hoochie mama vibe. I really feel like uh, Vanji knows her brand and is getting better and better each week. She always goes with the little hoochie mama skirts, but then she comes up with this interpretation of it. And this is where it starts to get good. All in all, I think this is really, really well done and definitely gonna be a buff. 
And that is it for this episode. Girl, what did you think about this runway? Personally, I think this was an amazing runway. I was totally not expecting it. Pearls is not something I do. I think it's usually very classy. So to take to see people's different interpretations and take it into different directions, I was really intrigued. I actually think that this is the episode that I gave it the most five stars to. So it was really hard to choose a fab and drab of the week. Speaking of fab and drab of the week, uh, let's get into it. So who had my drab of the week? Well, my drab of the week this week goes to oh. Nina West. And no surprise, she's the only one that I drabbed. And it's just not at the same level as everybody else. So sorry, babes, you yet again have my drab of the week. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week, I'm giving it to wow. Chanel. I know this is surprising to most people, but I like things that are a little bit weird and a little bit kooky. And this was definitely that. We definitely saw a lot of beautiful things on the runway and I gave a lot of five stars. But I want to be inspired when I watch Drag Race. I want, to, I want people to push my boundaries. I want people to make me think what I could do. And this look by Chanel definitely did that. That's why I had to give her my fab of the week. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Who would you have given the fab and drab of the week to? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. And once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms. And I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.